on YouTube, the biggest fad on YouTube in 2008 was zombie games. Because you had Left 4 Dead, right? And Left 4 Dead 2. And then you had a million kind of games that tried to spin off of that. Then you had the Walking Dead Telltale series. Like, for five years, every game was zombie game, zombie game, zombie game. Right? And it kind of culminated with the Wii U version of Zombie U, which flopped, and then it ended. That was like, it was like Zombie U was such a flop, it just went, and no one cared anymore. The only exception to the rule being Call of Duty Zombies every year, right? Outside of that, people just didn't care about zombies anymore. It was played out, much like the Walking Dead television show, okay? Um, but then after then, it's been like fad after fad after fad. Every, every few years, there's a new fad. I remember within two years of me uh, being a YouTuber... Everyone wanted to make an action-based first-person shooter game. Whether it was a Wolfenstein spinoff, that game Bulletstorm, um, you know, working on the Doom reboot, Call of Duty was at the height of its popularity, Battlefields games were very popular. It was like everything was a, a, a first-person shooter. Everything had to be a first-person shooter. Then that died out, and then you had the era of the cooperative looter shooters, right? So you started the era of games like any Tom Clancy game, right? There's like 400 of them that played like that. Um among other, you know, these co-op games. <clears throat> and they were very popular for like three to five years. And then all of a sudden it was Battle Royale. And Battle Royale became the big fad. Now I would actually say it's not necessarily a big fad anymore, but what's the next game that's going to be this like this viral sensation game because of streamers? So, you know, I mean, you could argue Fortnite was the beginning of that, but then Fortnite started kind of the Battle Royale craze, right? But then after that you had games like uh, Fall Guys, Among Us, right? Then it was Cult of the Lamb. You know, I can keep going. There's like three to five, and it, there's another one that just came out recently. That all the all the fat isn't it? Son of the Forest or something like that. Again, it's a game that you never heard of. Then all of a sudden, it's like white hot popular because all the streamers are playing it. And then within a few months, it's dropped, and no one ever talks about it again. Like no one gives a shit about Fall Guys anymore. Who talks about Cult of the Lamb? You know, but that's what I mean. Like that's what it seems to be now. There's like these weird short-term fad games and that's the fad itself is short-term fads right <clears throat> anyway um so there you go but anyway i've seen all these fads over the years but why did every game development company and every publisher decide that games as a service was going to be the new model here's the thing games as a service works with this anything on a phone because when you play a game on a phone <clears throat> you're going into it with a preconceived notion that is not going to be a full-fledged epic well-designed story or anything when you play a mobile game you're essentially saying i'm going to jump on my phone and i'm going to you know mash on the phone for like an hour and it, a lot of those games are meant to just be time killers right i've actually seen there's a game on there i've seen i didn't play it isn't it called, like, AFK or something? Like, the premise of the game is that you don't play it. The premise of the game is you download it, and you actively do a few things, and then the game just plays itself all day. <laughs> you see? But that's, that's the ultimate games as a service, where basically you're playing a mobile game, and you're just grinding, 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 and then you need to spend in order to stay afloat in the competitive nature of whatever that game is. And, you know, every game is a little different with how that works. But that's the idea with those games is you're always going to have to have a revenue stream into the game to keep it going. Now, the thing is, in the short term, it's not a big deal. A lot of these games have these, like, subscription-based plans. Pay $10 a month and you get this certain amount of gameplay, this certain amount of items in the game, this or that, and then people just will drop that. The thing is, once you have that game for a year or two, you already spent hundreds of dollars on it and you don't even realize it. And then, of course, every once in a while, oh, spend just a dollar today, special deal. Do this microtransaction and get this, this extra special value or whatever. And next thing you know, you've spent more money on a stupid game that's a, supposed to be a time killer than, than you've spent on any game on PC or console in the last two years. What did I just do? I didn't even realize it because I was doing it over time. That's games as a service. That's the model. You're getting an ongoing service, and you just keep dumping money into it unbeknownst because it's not really apparent. You're not dropping $60, $80 a pump. You're dropping a couple dollars here, a couple dollars there, subscription here. Next thing you know, you spend a ton of money, right? So that's where games as a service is succeeding, is on mobile devices because that is already this ingrained formula of how they can work, and people expect that from those games. People don't expect to get a game downloaded on their PC or console, right? And 
I need to have a constant revenue stream into this game for it to remain competitive. I mean, the only games like that I, I can think of are MMOs, right? Where you had to pay that monthly subscription fee. You know, back in the day, games like EverQuest, World of Warcraft. Um, I used to play City of Heroes, City of Villains. It was actually quite controversial when they first announced that there would be subscription-based games in the 90s. People were like, what? I have to pay every month just to play your game? Like, And by the way, back then, you had to buy the game too. You would buy the game at retail price. You would buy the game at retail price, and then you would also have to pay the subscription-based fee to keep that going, or else you couldn't join the server and play it, and there was no offline mode. You know? So, you know, that, that was really the first classic games as a service, and since then, it's tried to branch out. If anything, you know, gamers are saying, we don't want to spend... 60 to 80 dollars on a game and then pay a, a monthly fee and then have to microtransact as well that's ridiculous so what a lot of these companies have done is they've tried to do it so that the game's free right so if the game's free now the games as a service model works because maybe if it was free you'll be inclined to dump a few dollars in here or there and then you get hooked on the game next thing you know you spent hundreds of dollars on it oops right but in the case of suicide squad 